let's talk about Ariel Hawaii. Let's talk uh, about Ariel Hawaii. Let's talk about Ariel Hawaii. You know, uh, uh, used to be a friend of the show. Um, yes, talking former about, friend. Talking a whole lot of smack. And that's my thing, man. If you talk smack, I'm going to talk it right back at you. Um, they had him on the Pat McAfee show on this weekend. I, uh, that's something that I did this weekend. Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, I called into the Pat McAfee show and, and actually had a conversation with Ariel Hawani, who had been ducking and dodging, running and hiding. Like, yeah. you know, you know, like, what, you know, I'm from the ghetto. You know what I'm saying? I'm from the right. ghetto. You get up and make a turkey sandwich 12 o'clock at night. You flip the light on. Roach is just running high. That's exactly what this Roach did. He just ran. He just hot. Got behind the toaster. Wherever he went. I don't know. But uh, I got, finally got a chance to talk to Ariel Hawani and just tell him a little bit about himself. And then, you know what he does? You know what he does? What he does? This is what he does. You know what he does? You know, he gets on the phone and he puts, he puts, he puts his phone out and he calls Daniel Cormier to protect him. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. You're telling me as your going in on him as we you know i'm thinking we have i think we're having a conversation here you know a manly conversation you know uh throwing beef back and forth and Between he two men in the middle of the conversation he pulls his phone out and calls his mama i mean called called daniel Cormier and uh <laughs> And said, please, can you help me out here? Can you please come get pick me up? It was one of those things. I used to go to the skating rink when I was a kid. And at the end of the night, you call your mama to pick you up. Mama, can you come pick me up? That's exactly what this sucker did. He called Daniel Carme to come pick him up at the end of the night at the skating rink. Can you can you picture that? Can you picture that? I mean, a grown man with kids. I mean, that's what's so sad about. It. I mean, but that, that's another story. That's another. I don't want to get too hyped up. I don't get hyped. What do you think about that? Well, you know, I mean, I mean, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I understand, you know, look, say you, you're at the skating rink and you think somebody's plotting on you. That, you know, then you might say, hey, look, let me call up the homies. Let, let them know what's going on. Let me have my boys meet up here so they can have my back. Right? That's one thing. That's one thing. Right? It's another thing when you're having over the phone a conversation with another man. Right? And calling him out on his BS. Because yeah. Ariel, he's one of these guys we call a keyboard warrior. You know what I yeah, mean? Behind yeah. these mics, man talks tough. Yeah, you know what really. I mean? You might, think, you might think he could do something. You know, yeah. he talks so tough behind it. But as soon as he's confronted, what does he do? What does hey, he for do? those guys who don't know Ariel Hawani, Bradley, enlighten them, please, who Ariel Hawani is. Ariel Hawani is an ESPN journalist uh, who's covered the sport of MMA um, for quite some time. And he currently hosts a show with a future Hall of Fame, former world champion, uh, Daniel dc cormier now yeah. if you're unfamiliar with how this man looks you know we, we could share a photograph of him right and then you tell me if this guy looks like somebody who's going to do something okay so let me let me get this picture up of mr helwani so this is mr helwani he you know he acts like he's going to do something this is the guy who talks all the smack about booker t this guy right here you know <laughs> This cheesing Canadian is the uh, man, yeah. you know, and, and he walks around saying that he's the nine time journalist of the year, which is probably off some uh, self promoted blog. He probably voted for himself in a poll somewhere. He's, he's <laughs> he, he claims that he's a proud Canadian and he, he you know, always says that Bret Hart is the greatest wrestler of all time. Bret Hart would be ashamed to know that Ariel Hawani it, it, you know that he's Ari Hawani's favorite wrestler. He would be ashamed by that. He he, yeah. he would be sickened by that thought. And the thing is, man, I I've, I've been in the ring with a, a multitude, a plethora of um, you know Canadians, uh, great great wrestlers. I always said the Canadians uh, were the best wrestlers outside of guys from Texas. <laughs> you get, me. you know what I mean. So uh, it's always been a uh, love for the uh, Canadians, um, for me. But with this guy right here, man, this, this guy, guy, I mean, this guy. <laughs> look at him, man. Just look at him. Can't wait to knock the smile off of his face. You know what I mean? He's a pretty kid. He's a pretty kid. But out there, I deal with him. He won't be so pretty no more. Trust me on that right there. That's another story. But my thing is this: I, I actually, uh, you know, want to, uh, you know, what I want to take something back um, that I said about DC, man, because DC. DC got got brought brought into this by this guy, you know. By this guy, you know, th from the beginning, I just wanted to get DC on the show, talk about him going into wrestling and actually doing some commentating, right? Which, which you know, I thought this thing was, you know, said, uh, you know, I, I really said nothing about him, but man, if I catch him at Starbucks, I have a little conversation with him. Then all of a sudden, he wanted to go on a world tour, you know, talking about Booker T and my career, my relevancy, 
uh, I'm still in the business. Hey, I'm still, I'm still there. I'm still there, uh, and, and I'm gonna be there quite some time. I got a low contract, uh, but but my thing is this: I, I, I'm I'm gonna tell it like it is each and every time, um, no matter who it is, no matter what. But I want to apologize to DC for saying some stuff about him for because of you know it what it I, I got a little hot. I got hot. You got a little and, hot. And once my temper, you know, once you push my button, you know what I mean. I go somewhere. So DC, I apologize to you, but it's it, but as far as um, Ariel Hawani, you know, bringing you in this, getting, get, I mean, because the thing is, if he wouldn't have called DC, I wouldn't have never said anything. Um, and 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 DC kind of got on the phone and backed him up a little bit, you know. So don't jump in the fight, man. If you don't want to get some scratches, you don't want to get a few bruises. Uh, but 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 Ari who brought him in uh, to that fight. But 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 there again, I want to apologize to DC. I, I I can't take it take it back or anything because it's true. It's true. But um, I apologize for actually bringing you in that dog fight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. Look. Look. I got. I got. I got love and respect for Daniel Cormier, right? But if Daniel, if Daniel wants to run his mouth and, and back up his boy, Eric Hawani, here's the thing, book. Here's the thing. You know, Look, if, if you no, stand, no, 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 no. If you stand behind somebody, you you're going to get his. <laughs> I'm just saying, if you stand by somebody, you know what I mean? If you, if, if you run with somebody and they talk, right, and, and you back them up, then, then obviously you want the smoke too. Well, something might happen to you, man. You know what something I mean? Something might happen. You know, something might happen to you if you you're in the wrong place at the wrong time, messing with the wrong people. You know what I mean? And my thing is this: you know, I'm a nice guy. I'm a nice sure. guy until you push my butt, um, like um, Hawani. And my thing is this: I'm gonna jump off of Hawani. I ain't gonna give him no more time no. on my show. But um, you know what, man? I'm an easy man to find. Um, if you want this little rivalry to keep going on and on and on, we can keep it going, man, because I can talk all night. I can talk all night. Now, I don't know if you know about the, you know, the guy that was trying to prank me that ended up getting pranked. You, you don't want to mess with me, you, bro. You know, you know, that, that's you a story that, that only few know. You don't and if you know, you know. And that's not something you want. You don't want to do it. But uh, what else we got, man? But you we know got what? But you know what, Ariel? Ariel, <laughs> one more thing. One more thing. Ariel, if you, if you believe all that smack that you've been talking, this Saturday night, December the 12th, at the Booker T World Gym Arena, the house that this man oh, built, man. the two-time Hall of Famer, if you're really about to smoke Ariel Helwani, you will get your behind, your Canadian ass on an airplane, get down here to Houston, Texas, where we, where we mean what we say and we say what we mean, and we will see you in the middle of the squared circle, the 20 by 20, steel cage main event, Booker T, Ariel Helwani, we settle it. This way, let's see if you're really about it, Eric. Hey, let's you see know, if you're I'm really there. about it. 